Anyways. Hello and welcome to Brain Fart, now with 100% more actual brain farts. Mm, that's a brain fart. So today, another, I wanted to um, talk about Fortnite and video game trends. Because, you know, first of all, well, I gotta put something in the thumbnail. And second of all, this topic actually really interests me. Uh, like, there have been a few. Like, the one right now is... Um, what you call Battle it. Royale games, yeah, I like think is what PUBG, you're searching yeah. for. The bridge crossing simulator for Swedish YouTubers <laughs> and uh, the free one. And Fortnite recently hit like a record on Twitch because a uh, famous rapper, Drake, if you have listened to any of his music, came on. Not listened. Stream. Happily. Mm. You've been witness to, mm. you could say. Uh, and before that, if you think about it, with the quote unquote TF2 clones like Battleborn and Overwatch, obviously. Overwatch beat any mm. of those, but it was a big trend for a while. Well, it wasn't that big. Not as big as the Battle Royale. Oh, yeah, sure. But, I mean, trend. like, uh, it was a sort of a period between that and, I guess you could call it, like, Hearthstone clones. It was more of a... People realize how much of a market there was for TF2-like games. Because Valve, they've been running that business for how many years now? And, well... They haven't been doing a very good job, so other games just uh, started to do it. Actually, I guess you could say they reminded, because, you know, Valve, like, started working heavily, quote-unquote, on TF2, like, about a year ago. It, they tried to make, they tried to really, revitalize their really. competitive. Uh, I mean, like and I think that reminded other companies, if, you know, you make a new game instead of, you know, beating a dead horse, even though that dead horse is quite profitable and actually good-looking, uh, you could you could turn a huge profit. I think mm-hmm. Blizzard did that. Yeah. Then again, I don't know, because, like, didn't Blizzard work on this for, like, a lot of years? It was maintained Project Titan at one point. No, Project Titan was um, something else. It was uh, Prototype. Sure Ta- yeah. And Project Titan used to be, uh, well, it was speculated to be an MMO, and it was more or less confirmed to be something like that, but it was dropped. Uh, Project Titan never came to be, but... Uh, because, oh, because why make games when you can make clones with yeah. porn? Uh, Overwatch, it just uh, <laughs> it just happened. But I, even though it was made for many years, TF2 has existed for more. Obviously, uh, T- TF2 and the the voids in the market has ex- existed also for many years now. I would say after half the lifespan of TF2, maybe. I would say TF2 Six, is a real years. decline started around Man vs. Machine because that's when I started playing. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, I saw it like... Yeah, MVM, it did add a lot of drive to the market with the new items, but the, the actual play, not so much. And then the market was uh, taken over by uh, CS, so... Yeah. I guess Counter Strike is uh, is before. Uh, I guess I don't really know. I think after Hearthstone was released, but before Hearthstone really really got popular, was the real Counter Strike was big now. Because you know Counter Strike continues mm, to be big, but ca- it's Counter-Stri- not solely the mm, big game. Yeah, but Counter Strike it's been very consistent over the years. It's just that there was some per- periods where there really wasn't any other games. Except maybe in the days of uh, well, StarCraft was also pretty popular when CSGO was really popular. CSGO? Yeah. Yeah, it was 2013. CSGO was 2013. Yeah. StarCraft 2 really popular then? Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was 2014 when it, StarCraft started to die. Mm-hmm. And it's now fully dead. It's dead, Jim. Yeah. <coughs> How do so, you feel about that? <coughs> well, I mean, uh, I used to play StarCraft a lot. It was horrible. I have no idea how I kept playing that game. Uh, it, the fun of it is the strategy elements, but slowly with time, they just started to become pre-built yeah, from, build orders. From what I've seen of StarCraft plays, like big professional plays, it's just who can build the most units faster. Yeah, Pretty much. APM or actions per minute has been becoming more of a 
important aspect. Yeah, like thinking you, is becoming less important. I think if you important. want a real strategy in this day and age, you're gonna have to go with something turn based, because then you can actually have time to think and not just you know reaction span. I mean, the real time has its advantages in that the stakes are a lot higher most of the time, and oh, you're you're, yeah. you're a lot more pressured, which means it doesn't it 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 can test your ability to strat- strategize under pressure, under extreme pressure, which is very positive. Like, uh, take for example, Total War, the battles there, which, more tactics than strategy, but s- real time, well, if you play the game properly, you don't pause every five seconds. Mm. But, uh, yeah, also something else, like a Mountain Blade Warband, yeah. it's relatively... Relatively obscure, I think. At this point. Well, I, I know of it a lot. Interestingly enough, a lot of people around the place where I live like nag me about it. Like, you should play that. You should play it. Yeah. And I like thought it was just some sort of generic thing. I checked it out, and it's like kind of an RPG. From what I've seen, it's it it can be many things. It's 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 like Kingdom Come Deliverance, but actually good. It doesn't have anything in common with that shit game. Well, like the perspective on things being a soldier. Well, you're not a soldier. You can be a bounty hunter, a, a small lord for somebody. You can be the king. Like, you can be the king. Yeah. Uh, and uh, normally, taking over the entire world for, for the first time in the base game takes around 60 to 70 hours, maybe. Mm. So. It is. It it has some grindy elements, but I, I those like are the concept that you, if you spend enough time, you can take over the world. But like sixty seven hours seems a bit too much. For it's me. so much fun. The, the game, the game is one of the best games I've ever played, and uh, that's a strong statement. I hope it will be so. Yeah. I don't. I, by the way, like I don't know uh, what what's about games and movies. Like people love to hate them. It's like uh, people love to hate something. Well, yeah. And, like, <clears throat> I don't really love to hate things because if I hate something and I genuinely do hate it and I'm just trying, that's a bad game. I want to have less things to hate. I want to have more good games, you know? Like, I'm not happy when EA does some shit, for example, and everyone can see it's bullshit and everyone hates it because uh, that could have been a possibly good game and now it's not one of those. It's one of the shit ones. And well... Personally, I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't even touch new releases at this point. So, eh, with me, it's more of a trying indie games. But hipster faggot. Nah, fuck off. Like indie games, they're 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 a lot better. Oh yeah, well, you have a lot more creative in AAA. freedom in indie games. Uh, and not only that, they require to be. <clears throat> more innovative for them to be successful on yeah, like you know, modern triple A yeah you need something more than triple A graphics because they're uh, I don't know like I I really am amazed at people who find triple A graphics to be something impressive because yeah mm-hmm. I get it I mean that, that's photorealistic that's good shit I mean imagine how much time it took to code but at this point what difference does it make mm-hmm. I mean I, I play games that look like garbage yeah like the difference between 8-bit and 16-bit is a lot more than the difference between having 78 particles on 2B's left nipple than 152 particles, you know? Mm. I find I, I just find that ridiculous unless the worst they don't even optimize it so my shit PC can't even <laughs> run the game. And like, your PC is gonna be unable to run games in like 4 years. And you're going to well, really, yeah. you know, start to seeing the difference between something that looks good and is optimized and something that just looks bad. Well, Cause what I, it seems I, don't, to... I don't even... The games I've been playing, they've been slowly getting older, so... I, I don't know I'm gonna have to if I'm to even going to be playing games, like, the new games in four years. I'm going to come to your house one day and you're just going to be playing fucking pop. I know it. <laughs> But yeah, uh, take for example Celeste or Iconoclasts. Uh, the latter, I don't like that much. But point is, they're new. 
but they can be run on toasters. And they're reasonably good games. Uh, the second I personally didn't like because it was marketed as a Metroidvania, but it, it was it was linear as fuck. Celeste was one of the best puzzle platformers I've ever played in my life. Or, you know, actually just platformer, not puzzle platformer. It's you play Mirror's Edge. Yes, it's the first and actually not the last parkour game in 3D that I've played, but it only worked in two games, I think, and that's Dying Light, the zombie game. Oh, I, I've seen really good game, uh, really good things. But... Dying Light is fun. I spent about twenty hours playing that game, and the parkour was genuinely enjoyable you know what's a g- game with you know you know when you when you see when you you know this game floats up in your mind you usually don't think of it as a parkour game but it has excellent parkour mechanics the sonic it's really fun zapping around on the rooftops it's well like that's really that's more blinking than parkour well you have parkour in it too uh, yeah and especially if you want to get that fucking achievement of beating the game with no blinking you know? oh yeah that's that's an ass to get but it's fun, you know. I re- I really like achievements because they offer you new different things. Like I want to talk about achievements for a while. I know we've segued a lot, but you know we have time. We can get back to the topic eventually. You know, if the planets align. Yeah. Uh, I really like achievements that are actual classic achievements. You know, like do this thing that's moderately difficult, but like in a weird way that you wouldn't do otherwise. No. Uh-huh. I like that sort of achievement, because it's on the spectrum. You have very easy achievement, for example. You know, beat level 3, congratulations, you have enough chromosomes to count as a normal human being. Here's an achievement. Or, for example, beat the game by only walking on the slowest speed, engaging every single enemy. Like, that's just tedious. Mm. And, you know, it's nothing, nothing skillful about it. You just have to waste a lot of time on it. And now I'm triggering some nerves because I've seen some Dark Souls achievements like that. I mean, Dark, Dark Souls, I have all the achievements for all the games, but I only did it because I just really wow, enjoyed the Wow, I games. just noticed the size of your EP. <laughs> but I seriously couldn't care less about achievements. It, they're pointless to me. They have zero value. I, I never... Most of the time, I never finish the achievements. Uh, there is one game, Mark the Ninja where the achievement's really fun, but uh, that's also a game I beat around five times, and I decided, well, might as well do the achievements. Yeah, I, I, can, t- I can see that, like, fall on your Vegas for me. But, you know, you know, I, I, I brought this up in conversation numerous times. I think a game that really does achievements well are the Paradox game, like Europa Universalis, Hearts of Iron Force, Crusader Kings 2, Victoria 2, but... Not a lot of people play Victoria 2. Don't, don't they just lock the achievements behind? No, I some mean like game mode. Or Paradox something? games. Yeah, you have to get you have to play an Iron Man, Iron Man to get the achievement for that. That's why so few people have them. But the thing is, that's not the only thing because like that can be kind of annoying in most cases. But the thing is, that's not what it makes it special. What makes it special is the Paradox games don't have a point. There's no end game. There's an end date, but there's no end requirement. You know, you just have to exist. You can be a little one province minor in Europe for the, the entire game and you can still, you know, complete the game. The point is, you know, you can choose different things to do. And some are really outrageous, but are, you know, moderately difficult and kind of fun. Like, for example, there's an achievement off the top of my head I can think about. Uh, in, her, in uh, sorry, uh, Europa Universal was 4, where you have to play as Luca and you have to get, look now, the Indian province. So, you know, you can see how fucking tedious that would be to get you know, get some Mamluk territory from Egypt and over to India and so forth. But it's kind of challenging. It's fun. Mm. Uh, I really like that because it sort of gives you purpose to do something else. You know, it gives you a reason to do something that you wouldn't do otherwise. Because yeah. most achievements that may, you know, just follow what the player would do naturally as a progression in the game. Like, I don't think they need to be there. I like achievements. Like I, I'm gonna be really frank with you. I think this is kind of a vain thing, but like, for example, when I play a game and it doesn't have achievements, I'm kind of really pissed off. Mm. You know, it could be just some minor things, but like, I really like that. It's not something you know I die for. Like, I have a lot of rare achievements I could do, but I could do them really easily. You know, just be street cred. You know, have your Steam achievements. Or only three people on Earth have this achievement because only three people have enough fucking free time to do this shit. 
Uh, but like a good achievement, I think, is really satisfying. You know, when you do something. Hell yeah, I, I'm really proud of this in the video game. You know, mm -hmm. being proud of achievements in video games is kind of low. You know, you, you no, get normally saying. when I do things like that, I set my own goals in games. For example, uh, I set my, you know, goals like complete the game naked or something like that. Then you, you, then you get cold. Well, I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta do it. Like, there was this what, one. What if your parents walk in the room? There was this one time when I was, uh, I, I was doing the Dark Souls naked run and I was actually naked. And it felt so weird. You felt one as a kid. Yeah. But he, he was a bald, blue skinned bastard. Because. I know you don't want me to review your personal information, but if you somehow get get uh, another's picture, that's exactly what he looks like. Hmm. He's actually really disgusting to look at, but then again, you've seen me if you've seen my other videos and I'm no liquor, so you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Achievements to me are virtually worthless. I mean, even the achievements that want some kind of gameplay, my reaction normally is I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I think it's fun. Uh, for example, in Dishonored. Obviously, that's what all people do. In, in Dishonored, just looking at the achievement, no blinking. And I'm like, no, that's not gonna That doesn't happen. seem fun. <laughs> Fuck off. That doesn't seem fun at all. Hey, that's that's like saying play thief without sneaking. I mean, sure you can put an achievement for playing the game without using the mechanics, but that doesn't really stimulate. Yeah, I don't know. Like, anything. I I kind of enjoy that because it's an extra bit of challenge. But like, it depends on what you remove. Hey, I, I, if you remove a mechanic that's used wisely, but it's not like totally dependent like blink i mean i guess blink is actually really a big core part of the game but like say say uh beat the game without using projectiles okay i would really be fine with that because you know usually in dishonor at least from my experience i i find some tricky situations when like i have to pause time and i have to kill them with sleeping darts because mm -hmm. i'm doing no kill runs and like i can't i've tried but i can't find other ways i've you know, trace their uh, path, the guard's path, and, like, I can't find a way where I can take them out and blink away. So, like, that's my only option. Mm -hmm. Like, that would be, like, difficult, but I guess still worthwhile. You know? For example, but, like, blink, yeah, I mm -hmm. think blink is a bit... Uh, there is a game that does it perfectly, in my opinion, and that is Hitman, the new one. The... just Hitman, because fuck naming conventions. But that game is awesome in multiple oh, ways. Oh yeah, I, I, I've watched a lot of the missions, they seem really fun. It is on the level of Blood Money, which is, to me, one of the founders of stealth gameplay. And what, what it does is, basically the achievements are implemented into the game. Uh, there's objectives, there's some random things you can do. And yeah. Kill your target by dropping a piano on yeah, them. Yeah, that's like really good because what I like about the Hitman games is you have a lot of different ways to. Uh, that that's the thing. The, the the objectives never tell you to not do something. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, that's a really good way of putting it. Actually. Which I I like when games. I mean, sure, there are some uh, objectives there that are put in for the sake of completions that would be pissed off, like the suit only challenges. Which are bullshit and extremely not fun. But I think a game that challenges you, not by taking your toys from you, but putting up a challenge that requires careful use of everything you have, that's a lot more engaging. Truly. Mm. And in, in Hitman, the thing is that you play the same level a lot of times. You replay it and replay it. Actually, most of the game is a tutorial for the true game, which is a random target that comes in for a week and is gone forever. Mm -hmm. And you get only one try at him. And ah, you yeah, cannot, yeah, yeah, those special missions. You cannot save. You cannot do anything. You have to kill him. I've actually been like wanting a concept like this, and like 
I would call it. Uh, I, I originally wanted this concept and implemented into some kind of MMO. I thought that would be cool. Like a world boss that comes one time, then you can have one chance to kill him. But like this is a step, definitely. This is really good in my opinion. And and the point is that you have to use. You can kill him in any way you want. All that matters is he dead, you out of the level. But their patterns are totally foreign. You have no idea who these guys are. And you have to use your knowledge of everything in the map. Every single interaction. And See, that's how the CIA does it. The KGB just bombs the entire place to make sure. You, know, you don't want to take any uh, chances. You get there is a reason why in the game, if you can poison one drink, you can poison every single drink in the game. Now, if you walked up to some random glass of wine, you see the poison pop up. With, uh, in the missions, there's so many things that people never interact with. Like, that glass is gonna stay unused for the entire game. Yeah, I like the, the fact that you don't necessarily have to interact with it, but it is interactive. Yeah. But who knows, maybe, <sighs> maybe you see the target drinking from that and you poison it. So that's the real game, even though the rest is also really fun. But that is how the game was envisioned to be played. Because to get into the mindset of a master assassin, it is not easy because... You have to kill a lot of cocoa, you know, it's kind of expensive to come by. Uh, the game tries to make you a professional hitman by making you repeat the same level over and over again until you... Did you realize this could be used by one of those you know, anti-GTA people that says <laughs> video games <coughs> turn kids into perfect killers? Oh, mm, yeah. sure, but, well, that's bullshit, so... Yeah, but, like, I guess... Uh, shit, but th the point is, the Agent 47 in the game, he has exceptional senses. He... he He's is, bald. He has superpowers. Mm, <laughs> he is extremely smart. He thinks of everything. Well, and I guess you think of everything in, in and, his place. And that's the thing. When you play the level a hundred times, you know what's going to happen. Which means you are just like him uh, when he first out, starts out. So that is a way the game conveys to you just how much of a badass he is. And you can become like him. Turns out he was a badass all along. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very smart. I like it a lot, but uh, that's definitely one of the better examples of objectives in video games because I think achievements are that. Mm. Yeah, objectives yeah. to objectives do objectives that you're rewarded instead of with video game progression, some sort of reward outside of the video games. Yeah, I mean personally, achievements that don't really reward anything, I don't see much of a point in. Yeah, I, I like when objectives have actual impact, mm. but. Uh, yeah, I achievements aren't much of a serious topic to me. Mm. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess I just don't care that much. Mm. That's that's. Uh, I... <laughs> but uh, definitely a lot better than Hitman Absolution, where yeah, the achievements yeah. were horrible. Mm. So yeah, that's about achievements. So, about video game trends back. Mm -hmm. uh, before that was the big League of Legends thing, which I think... Was it's the, still going on. Yeah, but it's not that popular. Well, yeah. Every, everything has its heyday, you know? Well, yeah, but League of Legends, I've played it. I, oh, I see the potential. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's, I, it's fucking shit. I mean, I played it it's when so I was... so goddamn like, shit. Maybe like four to five years ago. It's so shit. It's not shit. It's, it's boring. It's, it's mediocre. It's yeah, I, I guess you could call it it's, that. Like, it's functional. I'm not going to say it's not functional. But, uh, like... It's... A dildo with a fucking nail on it is functional. You're still not going to use it. It's not going to be pleasurable. But the point is, it isn't a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. I don't know about that. I genuinely believe it's a poorly designed game. Mm. It's more of a... To me, at least, it's like, a boring okay, game. Uh, I don't, I don't like it as much as the next person, but like Dota Two is objectively better in almost everything, I... except for the fucking splash art, because Riot makes its money off twelve-year-olds jerking to their characters, and that's not a lie. Yeah, like Jesus fucking Christ, man. 
Yeah, but a lot of people say like Overwatch got popular because of the porn. You haven't seen League of Legends official art, man. Like you know that controversy a few years ago about Tracer's pose or her butt sticking out slightly. You remember? Yeah. They got nothing on League because you know League's kind of different because the in-game models are like barely visible, but the fucking splash art is fucking pinups. Oh yeah. Like Jesus Christ, man. Mahana. Uh-huh. But yeah, MOBAs in general are an interesting genre. I I played MOBAs mostly when I in my Warcraft three days, the original Defense of the Ancients. Mm, old school, and man. I I mostly played it with friends, friends on the one side and friends on the other side. We at least how yeah, everything, I remember it, everything is better with friends, man. Like even bad games. thing is. It wasn't really a competitive game back then. It was a game mode. It was arcade, like what yeah. what you'd see in the Star Wars arcade. It's Star Wars. Uh, Star Wars. Starcraft. Starcraft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, like Mafia. I mean, sure, people want to win, but eh, more. It's it's better to just have fun and have fun. But they just took it out, made it competitive, and it just made. I thought this was saying thirty minutes. Okay, we have point is, right? yeah. Point is, these games are not designed to be competitive. At least for me. Ah, uh, well, I mean, yeah, but they turn out to be really competitive. They, they turn out to be great for streamers. Oh, no, I mean, like, And for events. people watching them. But... Because League of Legends is the it's, biggest... It's just like with Hearthstone. It's more fun to watch <laughs> than to play. Because you get a personality, you get something cool, but actually playing the game, it's boring. And it, I don't know. It's I, nine, I don't know it's, what's happening with my voice, man. It's ninety percent just staying in the same place, grinding. So unless you have somebody to interact with, I that is in your shitty. Team. I would say uh, League is much better to play than watching. I don't really like watching. I mean, I don't like playing League, uh, in league either, I mean, but, you know. I, I, desp- I, I despise League of Legends in every way. I don't watch League That's of Legends streamers. Yeah, well, you know. But I can appreciate the, the, that they, they are really popular and people really enjoy watching them. And a lot of their audience doesn't even play the game anymore. Yeah, because playing <laughs> the game is horrible. Like, okay, let's well, well, start like this. I think playing League is more tolerable than watching me at least with friends but playing Hearthstone is the other way around like playing Hearthstone is bad but like watching streamers is kind of fun but CSGO I love to play that game and I love to watch that game it's genuinely the most entertaining pure gameplay only it's th- some games achieve that because uh, like with Hearthstone the, the tournaments uh, I don't know if you, you're really good at, big on the tournaments in Hearthstone a few, I think a year ago, the World Championship on Hearthstone, like, this Russian guy was losing 3-1. to one. Mm-hmm. And, like, suddenly the RNG got him all the wins and he won the cup. Yeah. It was, like, really barely articulate, you know. Sort of, like, go on the stage and, you know, ask him, what do you want to say? Suka, blyat, iti nahoi! Sayos, nye, That sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, like, that's not fun. You don't see anything new. Because you could do that, you just need the luck. But with CSGO, I genuinely, I, I, I would praise that game enough, because they are toxic players, sure, but the game has really been improving. And, like, I love seeing the actual professional players play, you know? A few years ago, you could gamble, and that was sort of a fun aspect, because you could get sort of, you know, uh, semi-free stuff, gambling on ma- matches. Yeah, but like, it's gambling. <clears throat> even, if I, even when I get ba- when I got banned from CSGO, because I let a faggot play on my PC, I, I shouldn't have done that. Even after I got bad, I still watch matches because they're genuinely like fun to watch. So yeah, that's my th- there's a lot of spectacle in the CS:GO matches, which is where it uh, it's better than another game I've played a lot, which is Rainbow Six Siege. Rainbow Six Siege is a game that I watch tournaments for and I play a lot. It's genuinely a game where you cannot win if you do not have the skill and the skill caps there. Are insane. Yeah, because basically it's really realistic, right? It's it's not really r- realistic, but you can break walls. It's no, no, no. I meant the 
people die quite easily. Well, in that game, the unique aspect is one shot to the head from anything, and you're dead. You kill my block. Without yeah, your your small block is a viable weapon in that game. Like when people run out of ammo on their primary weapon, they do not reload. They switch to their secondary. Like in real combat, yeah, <laughs> like it's it's extremely tight as a game, but tight, thick. Watching it is also really fun because you get to see all these people. Yeah, I think adapt their strategies. But I've watched you play it. Like I'm, God knows, I don't have the PC to play it or the money. Uh, it is weirdly optimized, by the way. That game is crazy. How much they've optimized it. It can run on the shitty Xbox. Like Xbox, I think. I think you're overestimating my PC. No, no, uh, your PC no chances, but yeah, yeah, it can run on 30 FPS. Yeah, but uh, on like, older uh, consoles. Well, well, I think what's the issue about that game? It, it requires too much patience to be like really popular. It's it's yeah. You know what games get popular, right? Kitty games. Uh, games the kids play. The casual mode isn't like in CS:GO. It's instant respawn. It's the casual mode there. You die and you're dead. Yeah, because it wouldn't make sense. The game is yeah. Feature there is know. no response when you kill a teammate. It actually means something. It's not like he responds behind you and he kills you. Then you respond behind him and you kill him. Then he responds behind you. I really hate that. Oh, y- oh yeah. In and- like casual fucking CS:GO. R- in Rainbow Six Siege, you pull that shit, you get banned for first a day, then a week, then a month. Team killing. Sort of like Facebook. The point is, team killing is not tolerated. A random team kills happen, but that's just, ah, just I because. Ah, a really popular web. I'm like, oh, you want a guy to play Rainbow Six Siege and the other watch in front of his fucking skull. Oh yeah, that happens more often than you might think. I think that's all about like, team coordination. You know, well, you thing is, in in ca- in it, it happens even in because it's a tense situation. And you cannot be aware of the relative positioning of every single person on your team. Yeah, yeah. One stray bullet is all it takes for you to die. Mm. And the people in the game have very good aim. When when you start really playing the game, you learn to get headshots. Because yeah. if you get headshots, you reach the skill cap for shooting. Uh, shooting is just one component, obviously, but... Because, you know, if it was a, a major component, like, that would be a really low skill cap. But because it's just one aspect of the game, you know, it's, it's quite... Yeah, funny. but normally when it's a gunfight, it's... It's not really... It's not really advice to do gunfights, because in gunfights, as, there's just as much of a chance the guy next to you will get that one straight bullet in your head. So, normally, you g- go through the 100% kill chance, which is ambushes, mm-hmm. flanking, and in general, th- that's also another thing. Gunfights aren't encouraged by the game itself because the defense team has objectively worse guns than the attackers. Really? Yeah. Like the terrorists, right? Uh, no, no, that's uh, suspension of disbelief. Both the Special Forces, CIA, whatever the fuck they are. It's like, the, it's like, you know, memes mimic reality. Because uh, recently there was like these, uh, I don't remember when someone in the Middle East, like one armed group by the CIA was fighting another armed group uh, by armed by the FBI. Oh, yeah. That kind that's, of shit. That shit's fucking hilarious, man. Yeah. So point is, especially if you're on the defending team, you do not want to get into a gunfight because... You have shotguns and you have submachine guns. The other team has rifles, like proper assault rifles. Right. And they can wreck you. So gunfights, gun not a smart idea. But the defense team, for example... Though, like, that's a really smart decision because if you're on the defensive, you can pick the traps. And if you trap someone with a shotgun, you're more... You know, a shotgun is deadlier at close range than an assault rifle. Yeah. Point is, the assault rifle is quite versatile. So uh, unless you have the short range shotgun, it's going to be much worse. Yeah, that's the point. So the game is more focused on you being smart. For example, on the defending team, if you all stay in the objective, 
you will die, all of you. You have uh, if you do that in a ranked game, you have near to no chance if you all just camp because if the attackers are fo fo um, focused on just one room, they have grenades, they have rifles, they have drones that can pinpoint your exact location, and no matter how quick you are, one guy is gonna you be sound on the like drone. Fucking advertising for the, for the CIA. <laughs> yeah. But you have one guy on the drone that's constantly telling your teammates where they are, and since you're not playing casual, what a fucking snitch. Yeah, since you're not playing casual, where you can, uh, there's this uh, feature where you can mark enemies on the map, but there's this really big, uh, big uh, red text that pops uh, on their um, HUD, which is like, you have been spotted by an enemy drone. And they immediately panic and look for the drone and kill it, which is something you do not do in rank. You just tell the location over comms, and they just kill him. So point is, is he's basically camping while he's watching the drone. Yeah, one uh, that's a thing that is that's a popular strategy. One guy on the drone, the other is attack. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have what is so called a roamer, a guy that doesn't stay on the objective constantly keeps them up on the, on their toes because yeah. they have to watch their backs and when they watch their backs they're paranoid and when they're paranoid they're not as effective true true so the game requires a lot of thinking and a lot of smart plays but that is something that is also carries over to casual mode casual mode cannot work with uh, in CSGO so, like, the it rank can't work if it's truly casual yeah, point is, you can say like casual that. games are not really casual, like in the sense that CSGO casual games are casual. Yeah. Like, like God's sakes, if you had Russians in that game, you wouldn't be able to do jack shit. Yeah, like, it's, it's uh, very interesting, but that is why the game is spectacular to watch and play at a higher level. Mm, I could imagine. But... At a lower level, it's hard for new people to get in because the learning curve, it's its almost 90 degrees for that game. Because you get thrown in, you can die, 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 and die again without getting in a single gunfight. Like, we're not talking about missing headshots, we're talking about not even getting the chance yeah. to shoot somebody. And that's really a turn off, for example, some games when that happens, I'm just like, okay, this good ass shit. Yeah, in Rainbow Six Siege, a lot of uh, good advice for new players is to bite the bullet and play single player mode for hours until you can aim properly. Mm. And that is not as fun, you know, you're just shooting some terrorists. Yeah. It's, it's not multiplayer, but you have to do it if you want to be good at the game. And when you get good at the game, you have to keep doing it so you don't get shit at the game. Mm. Your aim has to be perfect all the time. You know what I like? Games where you can actually clutch. Oh, in Rainbow Six Siege, clutching is really... It's po Firstly, it's possible, uh, but secondly, it's not that hard to do. Sometimes, because... Yeah, sort of like in CSGO, I really like that in CSGO, because, you know, um, once you're talking about, you know, gaming trends and, like, popular games, and, for example, League of Legends, you can't do that shit. Because, yeah, by the point you're left alone on your team... The, the enemy is so much more powerful than you, purely on statistic. You can't do that shit. Yeah. Like, I really like the, the fact that if you're really good at the game, you can fucking kill the enemy team with a block, single-handed. Normally what happens is the enemy team gets greedy when they kill you. I, I've seen clutches, but on the global scale, because in ranked, it's a point... Uh, and who gets six points? I mean, that's the tournament. And... There were games when the enemy team gets four and the other team, uh, Millennium actually they were called, they just started killing them and they were really cocky. They were trying to close the game fast mm -hmm. and it worked out with Millennium actually winning five games in a row and winning, which is something that it's... I've seen that in the too. Like in rounds. 
in CSGO it's a bit different because your progression carries over from rounds. You get Ah oh, yeah, true. Like, that's, there's I a lot of stra- there's a lot of strategy around money. Pico around and so forth. Yeah. So, but it's still less than fucking, you know, the lopsided curve that you would get in the Yeah, yeah, but it's it's uh what I like about CSGO is there's a global strategy about the game. It's not just round to round. You have to manage your resources round per round. So yeah, you but can it's win not, in the long term. True, but it's it's not like it's not so severe that you can't win realistically yeah. if you're on but an eco round. Like that's some sort of the most satisfying shit, you know. Uh, you get a cheap pistol on an eco round, you kill a cocky faggot that's bottom AWP, you get his AWP, oh, look at me, an expensive sniper rifle. Oh boy, I'm ready for the next round. Yeah, you can do that, but point is that there's a global strategy to it, which is really fun, but it's not something Rainbow Siege was going for. From there, it's purely round to a round. And the rounds are three minutes, I think. Yeah, yeah three minutes. Like, uh, I think the, the average is around three yeah. minutes. And I think that's a really good idea to keep the rounds you know, quite on the short side. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, you have tension. Like in League... Sure, some CSGO or Rainbow Six Siege games may be longer than the League game, but League, like, the amount of action you get is very, very it's, low it's nothing. on an average game. But you're guaranteed action every round in these games. It might yeah. not be a lot, but it's guaranteed. Yeah. And normally around... A the third, pacing's really good. Yeah. You have to get it right to get people invested. A third of the round is spent normally exploring the map. Getting familiar with what the defenders are doing. Because the thing is, unlike CSGO, when map knowledge is not something you just acquire, it's something you have to scope out every time. Because what walls are reinforced, where oh, traps are placed, time time. the defenders choose where to place them. At the beginning, before the round starts. There's uh, oh. a minute prep where the attackers get drones and they get to drone it out while the defenders reinforce walls place down traps things like that oh. there's a pre-round to the round and then uh, far play you might say yeah <laughs> so the point is that just knowing the maps even though knowing the maps is obviously a major difference between a new guy and the experienced veteran oh, yeah. But you so like in uh, sorry to cut you short a bit there, but like in CS:GO you have this term called pre-shooting. Like really good players, they they know where people generally are, and, and depending on the the, the archetypal situation mm. on the map, you know if it's an eco round or if it's not an eco round, and they before they turn the corner they instinctively shoot. So after they peek, they will automatically shoot. Whether there's a guy or they're not, uh, there or not. Yeah, that that is a strategy that is seen. Because it's bit. faster than, you know, just seeing the guy shooting after you've seen him. Yeah. Uh, reaction time is... Because there's a peaker's advantage in Rainbow Six Siege due to... Uh, well, call it maybe 10 to 20 milliseconds advantage to the peaker. Uh, but... Uh, Oh boy, pre shoot pretty exact on those numbers. Oh yeah, it's been calculated. But uh point Science, is pre shooting is normally worse for you because you don't really need to shoot much, you just need one bullet in the right place. Yeah, and that kind of gives you away, which is bigger than Yeah. No- normally you if you pre shoot you're just gonna get shot in the head. Like and you might get shot in the head through a wall. Oh boy. Because walls, firstly, they're destructible. And if you, uh, for example, if you know where somebody is, it's a lot better to just pre shoot through the wall if you know that he's there because you're going to kill him. I mean, even. Sh- Actually, that, that's a very interesting concept and it's very realistic if you think about it. Yeah. But wouldn't that kind of make the game. I mean, this is not kind of connected, but I'm quite interested in this. Wouldn't that make the game uh, detecting people who use wall hacks harder? Like you have to differentiate between the actual the wall U- the Ubisoft the wall uh, 
Ubisoft has really done their job well with hackers in so this game. What the fuck did you just say? Actually, yeah. Like, hackers, they they just get annihilated normally. I'm gonna need you to, to like, reverse your statement. <laughs> Especially in ranked. I've never seen a single hacker in ranked, which is crazy to me. And Ubisoft, they're clearly, I mean, they're kind of dicks about it. They are uh, a bit of a scare tactic about right. it. Every time somebody is banned from the game, it's a global announcement. Everybody, whatever they're doing, they see somebody was banned. I think there's at least one guy who made his username your mom, so that everybody could see your mom just got banned. <laughs> that's that's a definite maybe. Oh uh, yeah. But yeah, point is that uh, does Rainbow Six Siege have any customization options? It has some cosmetic things, but uh, the guns have some customization, but it's very minimal. Like functional customization or like purely... Uh, well, the gun... Jobs. Yeah, I mean, obviously it has paint jobs and garbage like that. Nobody uses it. It's like, oh, well, I can tell you a, an old game. It's still supported, I think. It's called Black Light Retribution. Have you played it? No. It was like one of the first games on Steam I played because it was free to play. Like... It's like Call of Duty, but futuristic and good. Mm -hmm. It was really special because it had this gimmick where if you press V, you can see through the walls. Uh -huh. And everyone can do it. So there's no campers. <laughs> and, you know, you have to be dynamic and lower the map. That game had weapon customization. Up the fucking ass. Mm. Like, you could fucking... You can, you know, make a scope out of three parts. And, you know, they have slight stat bonuses, but you can basically customize your weapon. Yeah. Everything about it. Like, not only the paint job, the specific parts and the specific key ring on the weapon. And it was free to play. I mean, mm. sure, it was kind of pay to win, but, like, the things were balanced. If you had a shitty gun, you could still win. Yeah. You know, actually, again... I have some old videos on those you can check out on my channel. I'm Jesus. not. I'm not flexing. I'm not saying you to check out. Please don't check them out. They're really cringy as shit. But if, if you know, if you're feeling kind of masochistic, you know, they're there. I'm just saying. There, there's another game that I really want to put into this category of extremely skill based, and it's. I think it was called Fistful of Frags. Ah, oh, yeah. It's a crazy that. little game, but. Uh, actually, the way that it works there is kind of similar to Rainbow Six Siege. Most of the customization you get is with which gun you're gonna use. Mm -hmm. Not really, uh, because you mean functional customization. Well, I mean the guns have like scopes and things like that that you can customize, which yeah, is yeah. still functional customization. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 what I'm trying to say is it has an effect on the game. It's not just yeah, yeah. Crap. Basically, how it works, you you unlock an operator for. Uh, so, Depends on what edition of the game you bought. Normally, it's not much. Uh, the game is actually pretty lenient with how much in-game grinding it takes. But uh, uh, the, the the actual guns, they also have some customization options like scopes that you can put on things, but they're dirt cheap. It takes maybe a game to get... Yeah, the yeah, the same with the Blacklight. It like took me like three games to buy a, a scope for the league. You no, know, they had actually had a very uh, interesting customization system where things are relatively cheap to buy, like parts for your guns, but you can like rent them. Uh -huh. You can buy them permanently, but that takes a lot of money. So like the only things after playing for about a year, the only things I actually had as permanent were a helmet and I think a scope on my gun. Like, uh, I'm, a, I'm a red dot motherfucker. That, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fucking classy. Mm. You know, none of that gay iron sights shit. Well, obviously, I prefer holographic sights. Yeah, it depends on the weapon, though. Because I, I played a lot with the assault rifle. You can get a holographic for a, a, a like, kind of long range weapon. Yeah. But, like, uh, the game is really dynamic, so snipers are kind of not really used. Mm. The thing is, someone can respawn behind you. Open your little tight little alien suit and slide, slide your, yeah. slide the barrel of their thing into yours. What do I miss with the Russian? Shoot all over that shit. Shit. Uh, we do not encourage the use of our mother tongue on this podcast. So, uh. Um, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess we got pretty in depth 
in this sort of uh, podcast level. It's good for a second episode. I think it's much better than the previous one. How how would you rank this? I'm sure. Ten podcasts out of ten. Mm. You know? Yeah. Original. Kind of, kind of good. All right. Well, anyways, guys, if you like the video, like the video, subscribe, whatever you want to do. It's a free country. At least you hope. I hope you're not getting from North Korea, in which case, uh, fucking ni hao. Uh, and Patreon's down in the description. If you're feeling mentally ill, you can donate some money. It might help me buy some, um, some things. And uh, as they say in Polish, oh kurwa. <laughs>